few weeks ago, I went into my local hobby shop to pick up a few small dowels. And at the checkout, I noticed some metal kits that were sitting on the counter. And I was intrigued with them and asked about them. And what they are is they're actual miniature metal model kits. They're called Metal Earth. They're produced by a company in Seattle and made in China. And they've been around for a while, but I had not seen them before. So I bought half a dozen of them, brought them home. I started out with a guitar, and even though I'm an experienced modeler, I ran into some issues. So I thought it would be a good idea to put out a video and show the basics, maybe the concept and then a few tools that will help you from getting frustrated and worst, tossing them out, never looking at them again. So let's get started. First off, let me say that I'm very impressed with the precision of these kits. When looking at the guitar, the finished guitar, it's hard to tell how it went together. But I can tell you that it all started out as a flat piece of metal, just like this. And then by bending, folding, inserting tabs, and sealing the tabs, it comes together like a little charm. This is about four inches high. And I'm going to talk about the advantages of this kit in terms of being able to actually finish it. I, I thought to myself, how am I going to be able to make all these curves and round pieces? And I'm going to tell you how I started out. So the knobs were the most challenging piece uh, of the front of the guitar. It took me about 30 minutes to get them properly done. And I'm going to show you how I did that. The same thing will apply to other kits that you might build. You'll need to make things round. You'll need to fold some things. But the beauty of the, the kit itself is that there are etched surfaces and marks on the back. If you have to fold something, there will be a fold line already marked and it will be like indented ever so slightly so that you can bend it easily. The pegs or the pieces that you put into the slots, the tabs, are really small. And what I use to, to bend them over to seal the connection is I use a pair of tweezers. And you need to make sure that they're the kind that have an angle on the end. That will be the easiest to work with. I got these at Walmart for a buck and a half. So they're not expensive. The other thing that's almost a must are flush cutters. A flush cutter is merely a pair of pliers that cuts at a, without leaving any mark or it, keep, it, it cuts perfectly even and flush with the, where you're trying to uh, make the cut. They're used in uh, wire jewelry and, and things like that. I have a couple of pair. They're not expensive and Xeron is a, is a brand that you can find easily. The metal screwdriver I use is just a regular micro screwdriver and I use it to finish the bend on the tab. So to explain that, on the guitar, all these little tabs have to connect it to the front. Now, if, you're, if you have a tab that's going to show, they suggest that you bend it over and then flatten it out. Well, to do that, I have to do it in two steps. I get the tab started because I can't get the tweezers to complete it. And then I take the flat head screwdriver and I just push it down flat. Works for me. You might find another method that works for you. But the idea is to start off with the tweezers. You're also going to need to shape things. You need to make curves or bends. I used some mandrels, just round metal rods. You might find other things like round uh, knitting needles or drill bits or things of various, or various diameters that you can use to make something into a circle. So when I did these small knobs, I found a perfect round drill bit and I wrapped the metal around it so that the ends perfectly met. I put the, the tabs into the slots. Then if it doesn't show, you take a pair of needle nose pliers, you grab the tab and twist it for 90 degrees and it locks it right into the metal. So these are on the back of the front of the guitar. So you can twist lock those and those symbols, they use symbols on the instruction sheet to show you where to do, use the lock 
and where to do the fold over tab. Okay, next you're going to be cutting out pieces on this and this is where the flush cutters come in. This piece has already been cut out and you can see it's perfectly straight, it's not bent or anything and that's what the flush cutters do for you. Some on YouTube have shown them uh, the pieces being punched out or bent out. Uh, I highly recommend you don't try that because you'll ruin uh, the model kit. Uh, so you need to actually cut them away. And you can see the tiny little connection points, not the tabs, but there are these tiny little triangular connection points. That's all you need to cut away and the part will drop out perfectly. Uh, some have tried X-Acto knives. This is not photo etch, this is laser cut, so it's thicker than photo etch material that modelers are used to using. So you can cut out photo etch pieces with an X-Acto knife, but I highly suggest that if you try that with these, you're going to have some deformities or bending and need to go to the flush cutters. Okay, now we can demonstrate how we're going to cut a piece out of the metal sheet uh, by cutting the connection point with flush cutter pliers. And you can see that there are two connection points, one there and one there. So what we're going to do is bring the pliers in as close as we can to the actual part on the flush side. Snip. Then we're going to turn around, go to the second point and do the same thing. I'm struggling with this camera in the way. Clip and out comes the part clean and flat. That's how you do it. The next step that I do is I'm going to cut out all of the pieces. The instructions are sequential, but they're done by the numbers that show in the parts diagram. So I cut out all the pieces and put them in numerical order and then you proceed through the instruction sheet by part number and that way you'll know exactly what you need to do next. So identify the numbers on the diagram, cut them out, lay them down on a sheet of paper or something that's marked with the numbers and then you'll start up here with number one, number two, number three and so on. And that way you won't go to the wrong step and mess up the whole thing because they do say that sequencing is important. <clears throat> when you're finished, uh, well let me mention first that as you go along I was wondering about how am I going to make these curves and actually in making the guitar the tabs and slots are so perfectly aligned that the only way you can get the tab into the slot is to have the right curve to get the right angle for the tab. And it does work. I was very surprised at how well I could bend this metal to get the tab oriented. Then once you get the tab in and locked down, it's, uh, it's a done deal. So it's really slick. The other thing that I would mention is that when you're done, the etched surfaces don't show marks very well but the shiny surfaces will show your fingerprints and everything else uh, that gets on there from doing the, the kit build. I used uh, Q-tip and alcohol to clean it off and then I buffed, kind of buffed off the, the surface with the other dry side of the Q-tip and it works really well. What I did uh, to make it easier to identify parts and make assemblies is I just drew circles onto my assembly board and numbered them 1 through 16. You could have more, you could have less. And then underneath I numbered them again 17 through 32. And then what I do is I pre-cut all the pieces out because they're numbered on the sheet and the assembly is in order of those numbers. So I pre-cut out all of the pieces, 1 through 16, and then I'll assemble those. Then I'll go back and cut out 17 through 32. It just makes it more organized and, and easier to do if you do it that way. So I uh, hope you dive right in and, and have good time with building these little pieces of candy models.